Today, we're going to be taking a look at this, the SI012 portable soldering iron from Secure or Squire, whichever way I meant to say it. In this video, I'm going to give you guys an overview of this DC soldering iron, walk you through some of its features and capabilities, put it through its paces on the bench, and get it outside. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some thoughts having spent a little bit of time with it. Now, this is a DC compatible soldering iron that not only supports USB-C input, but it also has a traditional DC jack and they supply a cable with it, allowing you to connect it up to a LiPo, which makes it ideal for what we do, such as building and repairing FPV, not only on the bench, but out in the field as well. Just to be clear up front before we get in this video, I do want to say that they did send me this soldering iron for free. I have not paid for it. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published. They have had no input to its contents. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at the iron itself first of all. Okay, jumping over to the overhead, let's have a look at what you actually get with the kit. Opening up the pack, you will find that you will have all things you need inside to actually get up and running, whether you be on the bench or in the field. And it's nice that you can have it in this nice easy case. You can toss it in your backpack and you've got almost everything you need to be able to do any repairs, or you could even build a quad in the field with it as well. So the main bit we're talking about here is the SI012 soldering iron head itself. This is compatible with both the TS style of tips as well as the T12s. So that's your traditional T12 and they supply one of them with a conical style end, or you can actually use those shorter TS style tips that are out there too. These can be bought for the likes of JBC irons, but these are more like the TS 100s and the other ones you see out there. But the nice thing about this unit is you can use both. Whilst they are interchangeable though, you do need to make a change internally. You actually need to add some pins for the shorter tip, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. So you do need to take that into account that it's not instantly swappable. There is some modification needed before you're able to do it. It comes set up as standard though with compatibility with the T12 style tip. And you can see it slides all the way in and then we have a locking screw on the top and bottom here just to stop it moving around once it's inserted. On the iron itself, you have a little OLED display. We have two buttons on the top. We have our barrel DC input, as well as a USB-C input, which takes USB power delivery type three, and it will take 12 to 25 volt on the barrel style input with the included cable. And this has an XT60 on it, ready to go for you as well. So if you're flying in the field, you're simply able to plug it in the back of the iron like that, plug into your battery and you're ready to go. Moving to what else is included, you have a nice little tub or roll of solder. So that means if you haven't got any, you can get up and running. It is lead free, but that's pretty much everything you're going to find today. You get a little clear bag with the Allen key in, which allows us to tighten up that connection on the end there, which we'll do in a second, as well as some screws and those extra connections for using that shorter TS style tip. And again, we will take a look at that in a minute. You get some paperwork, you get your instructions, a little screwdriver for taking the iron apart. And they also include a nice little solder stand in here as well, which you can open up. And this allows us to actually put the iron down nice and safely, so you're not gonna have to worry about it falling over or damaging anything, whether you're on the bench or out in the field. Just showing you in a little bit closer with regards to these tips. So as you can see, the distance the tip actually goes into the iron is different depending if you're using the TS or the T12. As I mentioned, it comes set up for the T12 already. So when you slide it in, you can see that it goes all the way through and that goes up against the contacts that you can see located there and there. There is a secondary position for contacts you can see here with the gold PCB sections visible and that is where you would add those copper contacts for adding in the smaller TS tip. However, they're not installed as standard so if you do want to use the short ones you are going to have to strip the iron replace them, and then you'll be able to use that tip. For what we're gonna to do today though, we're going to use the standard T12 style. So I'm simply gonna push them in. We're then going to screw these down to make sure that it is nice and tight and it's not able to move around. Now that tip is locked in and it's in place. Now you don't have to lock this in, you could leave this loose so rather than every time you put the iron away you're having to use this allen key 
to actually take the tip out. You can use it with these loose. I have done this a little bit myself and it doesn't really cause any problems. The only thing you need to take into account is you could get some movement on the connections there. It would be advised to tighten it down every time before use. However, if you were doing something quickly, you'd have no problems at all simply pushing it in and getting on with the soldering. To power the iron today, I'm going to use a nice big 4S battery that is fully charged. So we're simply going to plug in the DC barrel connector and you will then see the iron power up. On the display, you have various pieces of status. So for instance, you can see it says stop because the iron is not actually heating. So if I touch the tip, there's no temperature there at all. We've got the input voltage, the current temperature preset, as well as the current temperature of the tip. If I press up and down on the buttons, you can see that we're able to change the preset temperature from 300, 350, 4, 450. It's currently got it set at 50 degree increments, but you can change that in the menus. And then if you want to power the iron up, you would simply press and hold that button there. You would see it changes to work and the iron then would begin to raise in temperature. So you can see it raising up 150, 182. Within 30 or so seconds, the iron gets up to temperature and it's ready to use. And then if you want to turn it off, there we go. You can see we've hit 350. And then to turn it off, you press and hold and it'll stop. And you'll then start to see the temperature drop down as it naturally sheds off that heat from the tip. Just walking you through some of the menu options. If I press and hold this button here, it enters the menu and you can see we have settings for iron, idle, OLED, volt, calibration, and the about. The iron settings allow us to change the settings for the temperature and things like that. So if I press and hold, you can see you've got T-comp, you've got buzzer, temp units, work temperature, start heat on and off, factory set, temperature shield, temperature steps, so that's the steps it moves through. And if you just wait, it'll then back out of that menu into the next one. We can go into idle. This is our sleep and idle settings. I would suggest you set these up for safety purposes because it does mean if you leave the iron, it will actually automatically go into sleep and safely shut itself down, reducing the option of it actually causing any damage. We've got the OLED display options. So we press and hold that. We've got the brightness as well as the direction. So we can actually rotate it flip it over 180 degrees, as you can see there. So we've flipped it that way now. You've got your key actions, A, B, so the settings for that. Moving into the power options, you've got some additional settings in here, such as low voltage options, as well as the power volt adjustments. You have calibration settings. If you wanted to calibrate what the tip is actually doing versus what the display is saying, if you had a soldering iron temperature tester, then under the about screen, you have things such as the power delivery type for USB-C, as well as the DC input option too. Next thing I'm going to do is just test the performance of this soldering iron on some test boards that I have here before we actually take a look at it in real world use. I have this PCB, which is one of my own designs as a voltage regulator, and I use this for actually testing how well an iron can dump heat into a PCB. It's got some very large copper areas here at the bottom, and it's also got some smaller areas up there. I will also take a look at it on this little flight controller here too, and just see how it behaves. So what I'm going to do is set the iron to 350 degrees. We're gonna use the conical tip and I'm gonna power it up and we'll just now wait for it to get up to the desired temperature. Again, takes about 30 seconds to a minute depending on what temp you're actually going to use. So as you can see, we're up to 350 degrees and what we're gonna do now is just do some tests on it with this main PCB first of all. I have actually been using this a little bit already and I do have to say, it does a very good job of dumping heat into the PCB. At 350 degrees, it has no real problems melting the solder on these pads here. If I go over to these slightly larger ones here as well, it doesn't have any struggle getting the heat into those pads. We've got some here, which I can run back and forth on. Absolutely fine. At this temperature, if I go to the larger pads down here at 350, it was struggling a little bit. But what I will say is once I jack it up to 450, it's actually very easily able to deal with these. You can see there, I can't really get any movement in. But if we jump the temperature up to 450 and we'll let it actually do to that, I was surprised just how well it was able to get the heat into these larger pads, even with a large amount of solder on them. So again, it's now up to temp. 
we'll just let it try and melt in and you can now see it is starting to wet those pads let me just move across it there we go and it's wetting that large pad no problem whatsoever if we come over to this one here put a bit of solder on just to help it go in and again there really is no problems with it wetting large pad areas like that when it's set to that 450 degree temperature so i i am very impressed if i'm honest i really am if we drop it back down we'll take it back down to 350 for doing some smaller soldering work like we've got on this board here so what we're going to do is tin some of the pads along here on the bottom side this is one of my bench testing boards absolutely no struggle whatsoever tinning any pads and at times you can find a conical tip isn't always the best no problems at all if we shift around to here and we look at these uarts this is actually an express lrs receiver on here so if we wanted to do that we can just melt him off no problem at all it really does make very light work of anything I've needed to do. 350 has been about right for most things, but if you do need to get some more heat on some larger pads, it's had no problems at all doing that. Yeah, absolutely fine. One last thing we'll quickly do on the bench is one of the toughies, and that is an XT60. These are always one of the more difficult things to actually do, simply because of the amount of heat you need to dump into the wire to tin it first before going into the connector. So this is just being freshly cleaned. There's no solder on it already. And what we're going to do is get myself a nice big piece of solder rather than hold the giant reel in my hand. And then what we'll start to try and do is tin this wire first. This tip is not the ideal for this. The other chisel style tip would be a better option for tinning because it does have that larger, flatter surface area. However, again, I'll be honest, it does make light work of the tinning of the wire. In fact, in some ways, it's a little bit better at it than one or two of my main soldering irons. So we've done that top end. What we're going to do is rotate it around because it never does all sides unless you've got a lot of heat. If you've got a lot of heat, you can often get it to tin all the way around. I've set the iron to 450 for this. I'm actually really happy with that. I got no, that looks fine. Yeah, absolutely perfect. What we'll then do is we'll pop the XT60 into the connector. I've got a bit too much solder on there, if I'm honest. There we go. And what we'll try and do now is we will tin the the solder on the uh, XT60 first, just to get some into the connector. That's gone in absolutely fine. And then offer it up. Get that to wet. And then start working on getting that in. Ow, it's getting very hot. But again, it's, it's having no problems at all wetting in the connector. I would usually cut them shorter than that, if I'm completely honest. There we go. I'm going to put the iron down and I'm going to turn it off a minute. Overall, everything's looking okay. It's not the tidiest one I've ever done. I usually trim them back and do it like that. This is just a test piece. What I was really looking for is just how well it dumped heat in. I have to say... I am extremely impressed with this soldering iron and there is no reason you can't do anything you would normally do on the bench in the field with an iron like this. It really is very, very good. What I am going to do though is pop outside because I just want to see how it copes in the outside conditions because remember temperatures inside are stable and I just want to see on a similar test again just how well it's able to do it outdoors. 
Okay, so I'm out and about, so let's try the same thing out here. So we're gonna tin the wire first of all. Now I've got the iron set to 450 again, so I just wanna see how it handles itself outside because it's very different being on the bench than it is out in the real world. I can definitely see the behavior is different, but it's still dumping the heat in. So we've been able to successfully tin the wire. So let's get that on the XT60. Okay, so as you can see, it's all done. It did take a bit more effort out and about than it did on the bench, simply because it's sucking some of the heat away with the ambient temperature and the wind. But again, there's no reason you can't do anything you can do on the bench outside with this iron. Now, just before I jump in and give you my final thoughts on this soldering iron, I just want to say once again, I did receive this for free. However, it has not influenced my opinion but i do always want to make sure i am a hundred percent clear with you guys when i'm making videos like this what the situation is there will be a link to it in the description but it will not be an affiliate link it will simply be a link to the manufacturer's website where you can buy this if you think it is going to be good for you I've been using this iron now for a few days and whilst I can't comment on the longevity of the product from a using it point of view I have to say I think it is very very good. It can deliver approximately 65 watts of power and it has handled everything I've thrown at it pretty much without problem. Even large solder pads like I showed you earlier, jack it up onto the max temp setting at 450C and it's able to wet them nice and easily. Using it with things like XT60s, even with this conical tip, is straightforward and I even was able to do it out and about without any problems too. I do like the built-in LCD screen and the overall menu functionality is fine. I don't see myself going into it very often, but it is nice that you do have that sleep option because it just adds extra layers of safety as well. The real big benefit to this is the fact though that you can use it on that power delivery port USB-C or via the DC barrel connector on a LiPo like this and I've been using it on 4S and as I've said it gets everything done that I do need to do. This iron is ideal for using one out in the field but I will be honest and straight that you could use this as your everyday soldering iron. There really is no reason not to consider it for that application. With regards to all of the extra accessories you get as well, you do get this little nice pouch as I showed, you get the stand and about my only complaints with this product is A, I wish the case was sort of thinner and longer, which meant I could leave the tip on when putting it in the case, because if I put it there, you can see that it doesn't quite fit in. And I do wish that this was more of a silicon cable rather than a normal plasticky coated cable. It's a little bit stiff. It's a minor, minor irritant but it is something I wanted to mention as part of the review. Overall, if you're looking to get yourself both a bench and a portable soldering iron that works off a LiPo or USB power delivery, this will get the job done. And I do honestly think you will be very happy with it. The kit I've got here costs $79 with the two tips, but there is a cheaper kit available for $72 with just that single longer conical style tip. I want to thank Secure for sending this one over to me because again, I actually really have been impressed with it and it's really good to see just how far forward portable soldering irons have come because I remember the days when we were using gas powered ones and AA battery powered ones. These LiPo powered ones are basically fully fledged soldering irons with that portable capability as well. If you found this video interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little like button next to it as well. That way the analytics will smile on us greatly. Also, if you would like to support us to be able to keep making independent content like this, and whilst they have sent this to me, a lot of what we do talk about on this channel, I actually buy. And if you want to support us in that, there is a link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. And it is only by you guys using them am I able to keep making content such as this. 
Anyway, as I said, if you're interested, I really would consider checking it out. The link's in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will speak to you guys again soon.